Can we have a roll call? Oh, let's see. Brian Trepp is absent. Samantha Bynum, absent. Joe Bosey, absent. Joanne Shirky, absent. Dennis Shemansky. Here. Deborah Addy, here. Bonnie McInerney. Here. All right. So we do have a quorum. I did contact the applicant earlier and let him know that because there are only three members present, all three have to vote in the affirmative in order for this to be approved this evening. And it's my understanding the applicant has decided to move forward with his application this evening. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So could I get a motion to approve and or any amendments to the agenda? Make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, approval of the minutes of August 17th, 2022. ZBA minutes. Oh, never mind. I thought she had the actual number there. Could I get a motion to approve the minutes from August 17th, 2022? I make the motion that we approve the minutes of uh, August 17th, 22. And I'll second it. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And now I will read the Zoning Board of Appeals preface. The Clay Township Zoning Board of Appeals primarily addresses practical difficulty based on lot size, location, shape or contour, or, and or location of existing buildings. We are guided by section 27.05 of ordinance 126. There are five members on the ZBA, three members constitute a quorum. Each appeal before the ZBA will first have a public hearing at which time the appellant will first present his or her case and then any public comment regarding that issue will follow. During this time, members of the board may ask questions of clarification if a point gets belabored the chairman has the right to limit comments when the public hearing is closed the board will move into deliberation phase of the case before us if the appellate appellant should disagree with the board's decision he or she has the right to take it to circuit court within 30 days of the decision when your appeal hearing is concluded you are welcome to stay or leave as you wish so our one and only case this evening is ZBA 2022-017 at 777 Colony Drive. So if the applicant would like to come up and explain the appeal and what they are looking to do. First state your name and address, please. Hello. My name is Brian Gino. I live at 7771. Colony Drive in Clay Township. Um, well, I'm here to request respectfully a, a appeal for the zoning ordinance in regards to a an eight by 12 shed that I'd like to construct on my property. Um, my understanding is the limitations with the with the with the zoning uh, the R2 zoning requirements um and the lot size is just it's just not practical it's not possible for me to put a a structure in the in the yard on the water side due to the limitations of the zoning of that particular a uh, property my property um so what we came up with was and if you look at i had the uh a survey done which was required and if you could look at the survey itself, you have a, do you each have copies of this, of all the paperwork that was submitted? Okay. <clears throat> There's a couple of items that really will clarify the logic be, behind the request. And uh, one of them happens to be a topographical view, an aerial view, where it shows in the wintertime uh, my neighbor's boat and it's a 22 foot open bow, beautiful boat. Um, his garage, his house, how it comes out and over. And if you look at the, uh, the survey itself, it gives you a clearer view of the black and white photo. 
um, where the bolt would be in the picture and the limitation for his, uh, the way the house comes out there, the proposal that I, where I want to put the shed would be absolutely zero uh, effect to my neighbors as far as in, uh, impeding their view because further down that way, I'm about 10, 10 houses from the channel. So fortunately in the summertime, like right now when we're sitting on our back deck, we can actually see the channel. As soon as he pulls his boat out, that's yeah. gone. And, my, and you can see that this uh, garage obviously was built at a time when I don't know what happened, but it was probably the 50s, I think, the house was built. So obviously they, somehow that got slipped by. Um, if I were to put the shed 10 feet from the house, which is uh, one of the requirements with the zone, um, it would impede any view whatsoever. It'd be, it, my deck is 10 feet out, so that it would be literally flush with the deck. It not only would uh, block the view, but it would also hinder access around the house. And it would also impede anyone further down going towards the river or towards uh, the beginning of the road view as well. So the practical point w we thought would be, would be right there within reason off of, within the, the zoning ordinance off of the uh, um, property line, the three feet over and it's settled in between where it gives us adequate space off of the, uh, the seawall. Now, mind you, I have a six foot uh, gap from there to the fence that I, I recently had installed, which was a very, very nice high-end fence. And it was, everything was done with a permit and it had been approved. And uh, so after that, you, you basically have a six foot uh, boardwalk, which is in the process of, you know, I've only been there since the end of May, so we've done so much in such a little time here. Um, then you have your fence, and then we have about a, um, another six feet or so of where it would be, you know, a gate access and then a small deck area that we have access to our swim ladder. So we'd have a small deck on the back of, of the, uh, the, uh, the deck that the shed is sitting on. Um, so I can't stress enough the importance of the obstruction factor anywhere else on this property. I've spoken with my neighbors over here, which I'm kind of surprised they they're, they want to. They bought the home recently as well, and uh, they plan on putting an addition on. So they wanted to come up and see the process because they know that they're going to have to request an appeals. Um, so I'm kind of surprised, but she came down with everybody. Seems to be getting sick. So, yeah. um, and so unfortunately, that's why they couldn't be here, uh, or else they would probably verify that as well um and the other neighbor he he feels bad because you know the garage was there and he puts his boat there and he knows the obstruction but that's the way it is when you live on a small community like that 50 foot 50 60 foot lots so um yeah i don't have the survey right in front of me how wide is your lot can do you mind if i approach no 60 on the top 56 and a half on the bottom okay. 56 and a half at the water 60 on at the road i have it thanks i have mm -hmm. copies yeah Right now, yeah. No, I've seen the drawings. But just for so, some reason, as I'm scrolling through, I'm not finding. No, them. I spoke with it's the, the last uh, page. Okay. The one of the representatives from the board, Conley Park Association, um, and it was explained. I have board meetings, and you should have copies of those in there as well. Um, one was from August 4th, and one was from actually May 19th when I inquired originally about the fence because I, Correct. I had to get a. Uh, approval from the board for the fence which it was kind of weird because after you read this they gave me an approval and they requested a, a they came up with a number $25 for the fee to get the approval um, but then it clearly states uh, as to the fence on the Thursday May 19th um, Mr. Genos fence here I have it highlighted as explained to Mr. G on the Conley Park so she had no control of their property it was not located on the North Channel on the River Canal side. The CPA board has deed restriction covering only the river and its canal side of the association. Therefore, Clay Township would be the place for Mr. Gino to get his permit to build a fence. So that right there clarifies that they don't have um, a jurisdiction as far as any, any rules or bylaws. And then the uh, additional email that Don sent me after I discussed it to uh, the situation, uh, you know, he said as early as today, Conley Park Association does not have setback requirements for the shed on canals. 
So I understand you're able to relocate the shed to that only variance you will be required from the township is the encroachment of the 55 foot setback from the canal. And that's our concern, right? Between the house and the canal. It calls out on the zoning board of 55 feet a minimum. And I just don't have the space because from the back of my family room to the canal is 50 feet. Right. So, I mean, it just, it's, it just seems like it's, um, well, continuing with that brief email, feel free to share this information with the township building department. If they require the private a copy, provide them with a copy of our signed building permit application form. So that was basically if it was if you guys requested it, they would be happy to 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 um, to you know to have me fill it out and, and submit it and get approval for it. But there's no reason for it, you know, um, basically. Uh, was but the, I'm sorry. Was the house and the deck existing when you moved in? The I'm sorry, ma'am. The, the house and the deck off the back. Those were both existing. Yeah, yeah. You all the decks do were. Any additions or? No, all the decks okay. were there. And then the deck off the shed that you're proposing is that going to be at grade? It's already there. It was already on the property. Oh, okay. That. If you could for, uh, actually a, come up here and oh, give us sorry. your name, please, sorry. just so we have it for the record. Sorry. I'm Michelle Gina, and um, the decking that you're speaking of was already there. It was already placed there because he had a boat lift, and then he had, like, two little end caps that he had so you could stand on as well. So if you put it in the water, like you step down to get on your boat or your jet ski, you wouldn't fall in. You had a little bit of support, but they didn't really do anything. So the decking was already there. Yeah, we had to backfill the, the property. Um, we had to backfill at the seawall. We brought in we brought in sand and uh, a geothermal and, and, and um, river rock to bring that up because of the, uh, the water deterioration over the years. It also right. had literally um, this is no lie, around the entire deck that you can see on the big deck and the small deck, there were literally three, ro two rows of sandbags, three high, all the way around and along the seawall. So we've been, and the, the house next door, I bought that home last year at an auction and I sold it in the summer and we moved next door. We, we knew the family, we knew Randy very well, um, so we were blessed in that regard. So we just got done cleaning that home up and then Unfortunately, Randy passed, and we took a, the opportunity to to pick up that property, and then we moved right next door, and we started to. I wasn't living in the blue house; I was living out on Stone Road at the time. So, okay. um, it's just needless to say, I don't know where I'm twisting this conversation no. to, other than the That's... fact that the deck was there, and we had to move the deck to do the work on the on the on the seawall. And when I had the company come in to do all the backfill and everything else, we. Um, we did the same thing under that deck. The deck is 16 by um, by eight. So, and I'm putting a 12 by eight deck or an eight by 12 shed on it. Um, we had it. Uh, we had it leveled, sand, another geothermal foundation block, gravel, gravel leveled. I made sure it was like dynamite level, Jack. So it's basically a nice solid firm foundation and it was an existing deck that was there. Okay. If that All right. over elaborated it. I'd like to have a seat. We'll open it for public comment, which I don't believe there's any public present today. Um, were there any letters anybody. in the envelope? Okay. And he already read the letter from the oh, yeah. Pardon? Okay. I think this is, doesn't Gary, is here. there anything you'd like to say on this one? Oh, just that in the past, of course, the uh, uh, board has been gracious in allowing people to have sheds when they don't have basements and, and these smaller lots. If we're looking for the least evasive area on this lot, is probably where it is located now because of the garage right next door. Uh, so it blocks off, the garage blocks off everyone's view. Uh, and if we put this anywhere else, it would just add to that uh, obstruction of, of view. Okay. 
that's all I have. All right. Well, you think if, uh, oh, never mind. And I guess I will close public hearing. Um, <coughs> board have any comments? Well, just going in, look at the size of the lot. You know, it's only 125 deep. Um, I mean, this is this is a, a lot that typically on that block there were building boathouses on. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, um, it is a little wider where that's that little stretches. The houses are on both sides of that little that little spot in that area. Um, and like uh, like Gary said, you know, we look at it, it that where it's proposed to be is the about the only practical spot on that property. Um, and again, the view we determined on a canal is only straight out and not from left to right. So that shed or thing in there right. is, is only uh, impeding on their own visibility. Right. Just remember though that we have to go through. No, I understand. Um, so let's just we keep walking through it. So it's uh, Again, the practical difficulty would be of the, the gender of the size of the property, the location of the house, the location of the current decks, any other visibility point would be a, uh, uh, an issue for them and anywhere else if, again, like uh, Gary had pointed out. So I would suggest or, that we keep the shed as proposed where it's at in the location here, 13 off the wall. Um, three foot off the property right. line, so it'd be an eight by 12 shed. I think if you moved it to closer to the house, then you'd run into other firewall type issues mm -hmm. and setback issues from the house yes. and things of that nature. <coughs> okay, I'm sorry. And then the um, unique situation is um, the extraordinary circumstances is, is because of the garage that's right there in front of them, the, the, the size of the house and the configuration it is on the lot and the and they again they they just purchased this property in May um, so this was all there so what the little they have to work with uh, it's not self-created again these lots were uh, not designed for homes they were basically back and then for cottages you know and little boat accesses and stuff like that um, Substantial justice, you know, just given the um, the block that it's on, and um, you know where we come across this and this, and the bird lanes and Anchor Bay Drive, they're all very unique in its in their own aspect uh, realm, you want to call it. Um, and this particular thing, and this particular um, ZBA case, the location of the shed is about is the only area on this property that it can be done. And for us to deny an access for to have to store their goodies is it would be substantial justice. And again, and not contrary to the ordinance is that you know we have been trying to accommodate all these uh, practical uh, difficulties as far as people living on canals, lakefront, because it is different than anywhere else around. Clay Township is is the itself is the one of the most unique water from. Uh, Cities, it's townships. True. I always have to laugh. Everybody's like, you have ZBA meetings every month? <laughs> yeah, there's some like cities that have them every, you know, six months, every eight months. And we're like, oh yeah, we have them all the time. Yeah. So that in a nutshell, that's my, that's my story. Um, one more question, Gary, just to be a hundred percent sure we're not over lot coverage with this, correct? That is correct. So I have a motion. Do you have your motion here? Yes. I'll second your motion. <clears throat> so we have a motion and a second. And did you get all that down? No, I think I did. Okay. I took some kind of chicken scratch notes oh, too. We can put with it. Yeah, I was just doodling. <laughs> um, did you see she? Okay, you did see. She put a spot for the ZBA mm -hmm. case number and. Yeah. All right. 
Well, if there are no further comments, I guess we will do a roll call. <coughs> Deborah Addy, yes. Dennis Shemansky. Yes. Arnie McInerney. Yes. Variance has been granted. Now you get to work with Gary as far as the building department. <laughs> We've been going through so much. Well, you're having fun. Oh, Now's the fun part. You get to follow all his rules. So. That's fine. <laughs> we get to move forward. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, my. I was like, well, if anything, at least we got a nice fence for our dog ice. <laughs> try to postpone it, but I'm going to be on ice for the next two weeks. And That's horrible. I, well, I work a swing shift, so I'm going back on the swing. <laughs> that I, is, I, that's I, even worse. Um, it is, but I've been blessed in yes. more ways than one. All right, so you're welcome to stay and watch the rest of our meeting. It shouldn't take too much longer, or you are welcome to exit and go back home and enjoy Maybe the last of the sunset. I'm not sure. Well, at least we can wear a short sleeve shirt. Yeah, today. Yeah. today. Right. I just knew it was always freezing in here. So that's why. Um, any unfinished business that we're aware of? Uh -huh. All right. Report of Planning Commission. <clears throat> so last week we had a public hearing on On the Rocks, a special land approval. Um, he, the owner wanted to um, increase their hours from um, 8, closing at 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Um, there was a lot of discussion because he might not need 10, 10 p.m. every hand night. Hand. I'm sorry? Do you want to hand me that? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Um, there was a couple neighbors came. One was affirmative, one was very negative. Um, the long and the short of it was that we thought we needed more information based on <clears throat> police calls, and we really wanted him to finite his request. In other words, um, you don't need to be open till 10 o'clock every night. Are you talking Thursday, Friday, Saturday? Right. Because some days there's a lull in the action. So he was going to go back and uh, review that, and in the meantime, we were going to do some trying to figure out how many police calls were for noise, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So um, he's probably going to come back next week. So this is probably going to be a next summer thing? Yeah. He's trying to compete, you know, with Cabana Blue and all oh, that. Oh, yeah. And um, I don't blame him. No. I mean, restaurants have been Cabana's happen all, all the time. time. Yeah. Okay. And uh, that's it. Just okay. that case. Mm -hmm. um, other matters to be reviewed? Gary, one thing that I brought up to Cindy today that I was wondering is, do you think it would be possible to meet with the colony board or the president of the board just to get some clarification about what they're approving before we approve things so that people understand that an approval by colony isn't necessarily an approval by the township? Yes, I'm sure that we could. Um, I have spoken with uh, board members uh, only to understand that what the county board uh, county park association does is just checks to see if there's any restrictions on the deed to allow the projects to um, you know be approved or denied and that's all they really do and then right look at that but um, it, we could absolutely set up a meeting if you felt it was needed um, but the clarity that I've gotten and the understanding that I have is that that's all that they're looking for. They're not looking at our ordinances. Um, quite frankly, there was one right on the colony that, um, you know, they had hoped that we would have turned down, and it's before my watch, um, that they would have turned down uh, based on our ordinances, and, and a permit was issued, and it, it did go through. Right. Um, which has really created what we have down there now. Uh, but yeah, the, the 
Well, and I think that's where there's some confusion. I think some people think if it meets the criteria for the colony, you know, as far as what's allowed under their bylaws, that they're good to go. So maybe a little bit, or being a little bit more clear when they're going before the colony board saying, you know, make sure you don't do anything until you go before Clay Township or get approval. Yeah, that Some, that just something. It's educating, it's educating people. Right. Really is what it is. Because I mean, we run into this a lot back on the bird lanes. Yeah. We have a personal interest in that due to the fact that my, my wife was raised on the road and she lives, her, her father's home is literally right, next, uh, right across the street from a gentleman who's building a house right on the corner. Boathouse. A boathouse. It, it's a house. It literally, the square footage above it is bigger than our home. And now we under, we're understanding that they, there's a stop on it because of right. so close to the electrical. And I don't think, especially as a stockholder for DTE, that I should be required to modify my, my power pole for, for that eyesore that now when we look outside of our grandpa's house, all we see is 40 right. feet of well, again, that's not under the purview of us. <laughs> hey, a question though, it's for you on the planning. Uh huh. Um, uh -huh. When, when um, if the, the, I'm just thinking the back when we did this back in 2013, um, when uh, the whole plan of the Tiki on the Rocks, I mean, before it was called Tiki Rocks, it was Sunset Bay. There was smoke on Mill the bay scenes, yeah. it's and all that stuff. Things, yeah. And when I went in front of the board and I got that whole entire site plan, the outdoor music, mm -hmm. the hours, everything approved back then, how would it now change? What was the reason for that? Um, how did that change? You know, I didn't, let me find my notes. Because it used to be 11 o'clock outdoor pub music. I did not backtrack on that. All I saw was what our planner um, pulled off of the approval. From 2013. My, my guess would be would that it was closed for so right. long that they had to go back for new planning right. commission approval. And it was 8 p.m. And I don't know how they came up with 8 p.m. because that right. does seem very early. Yeah, it does. Especially in light of the fact it doesn't even get dark till 10 o'clock in, in the summer. Right. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there have been times, honestly, I... Yeah, but I think it's outdoor... Uh, it's... Because yeah. it used to be 11 outdoor, two inside, and so some, they got they changed something on yeah. it. Because I still have all that paperwork on it. Right. Well, maybe you need to go to the next planning commission. No, I on. just wondered if where yeah. they got yeah, that. Yeah, I couldn't tell you from. that. Right. That would be my guess, is that it was closed for so long, they had to go back for all new approvals. Right, all new stuff. And they did change a lot of stuff oh, around. Yeah. And well, I just questions. moved that outdoor tiki shed. Yeah. That's the... And I was in the upstairs for the first time ever yeah. for that comedy show the other night. Oh, nice. Yeah, they got it set up for a, a elevator, everything in that. For that. Yeah, they need one so that they can get food and stuff up there easier. Dumb waiter, at least. Yeah. All right. So um, we we'll see. Um, public comments. Did we already do that? Yeah. Okay. Oh then, no. Uh, again, no public. So, I don't believe we have any public comments. So, motion for adjournment. I make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, we didn't set a record tonight.